Weapon tuning is a new feature in Modern Warfare 2 that allows you to customize weapons more than ever before so they fit your personal playstyle. It sounds cool on paper, but do these sliders actually make a difference? Is weapon tuning worth your time in its current state? We'll discover the answer to that in this video. Now, weapon tuning is locked until you reach max level on a weapon. When you do unlock it, you'll see a gear icon and a tune button above each adjustable attachment. Weapon tuning is not available on lasers and magazines, but other than that, you can adjust just about every other attachment in the game at the time of recording this video. You'll see two different sliders when you enter the tuning menu that you can adjust to your liking. Sliding one way will strengthen one stat on that slider while weakening the other and vice versa. And in the center on that little graph, you'll see a visual representation of what the sliders are doing to your stats for that specific attachment. That's essentially all the basics. The question now is how much of an effect do these sliders have? And this is where things get tricky and a little messy. From my brief testing I've done and the general community's consensus, it looks like these sliders will make an additional plus or minus 5% adjustment on average to the relevant stats. But this will vary from stat to stat. You'll feel noticeable differences with some stats that use larger values like range and optic distance. For example, most optics have an eye position slider that acts as an independent FOV slider for aim down sights. You can see the difference on screen now between default and max close and far on these sliders. And this is this is the most clear cut example of what effects weapon tuning has on your weapon in general. But for a majority of attachments in this game, you're going to see little to no effect when you have just one attachment tuned. And more often than not, the negatives will outweigh the positives. So you have to be really careful with your tuning. For example, I was testing the aim down sight speeds for the SCAR assault rifle. The base aim down sight speed for this weapon is 250 milliseconds. With just one grip attachment that benefits aim down sight speed, I can reduce this time to 233 milliseconds without any tuning. If I tune the grip to max aim down sight speed, you get no change to your actual aim down sight time. When you tune it to harm aim down sight speed as most as possible, you actually revert to the base time of 250 milliseconds so it's like you don't even have the grip on at all albeit your recoil may be a little bit better so my general rule of thumb is on most weapons one tuning isn't really worth it Weapon tuning becomes worth it when you start stacking multiple attachments. So going back to the aim down sight time on the SCAR, I have three attachments on that help aim down sight, and then the optical attachment slightly will harm your aim down sight speed. This gives me a base aim down sight speed of 233 milliseconds, which is the same as just using that one grip attachment alone. However, if I tune all four of these attachments towards max aim down sight, I'm now looking at a 217 millisecond aim down sight time, which is almost a 15% increase in speed. If I tune all four of the attachments to harm aim down sight, we're looking at 267 milliseconds, which is about a 7% decrease from the base aim down sight time. Now the math might not quite add up. I think what's happening here is that additional aim down sight bonus from all the attachments before you even start tuning them still applies. So essentially you're starting with faster aim down sight time and then bringing that down by roughly 15%. I don't know, I, I don't wanna get too technical with it. I mean the values for every attachment are different. And when you're adding and multiplying at a decimal level with frame rate rounding on top of that, sometimes you'll see a difference with one attachment. Sometimes you gotta tune it to see a difference. Like I said earlier, sometimes it'll take multiple attachments. Not to mention, who knows if there's bugs going on with tuning your attachments right now. It's hard to say what's actually happening when there aren't stat values in game like we had with Cold War and Vanguard, which is why I wish they would add those stat values into this game so we can see what's actually happening to our weapons. The key thing you need to take away here is the general rule of thumb is on average you're getting a plus or minus 5% when you tune a attachment. And the more attachments you have, the more change you're likely to see. Now, is weapon tuning worth it? If you're already overwhelmed and have a headache just watching this video, weapon tuning probably isn't worth your time and you're not going to be at much of a disadvantage if you don't use it. Now if you're willing to go about weapon tuning, 
It really varies from weapon to weapon and depends on your play style for it to be worth it. Where I personally see weapon tuning being worth it is when you have weapons that specialize in a particular play style. Take submachine guns and snipers for example. For SMGs, they excel in up close and personal play, so range play doesn't really matter. You can stack attachments to help improve important stats like sprint to fire, aim down sights, hip fire, and tune those at a cost of stats that aren't as important like aim idle stability, range, maybe recoil, maybe bullet velocity, maybe hip fire accuracy, and then you'll have a super snappy agile SMG to plow through people with. For snipers, you can stack attachments that help range and aim down sight speed and or idle sway stability depending on your play style, and you can harm things like hip fire or recoil because who cares about those when you're sniping. Or maybe there's a barrel you like on an assault rifle but its aim down sight speed is too slow. Tuning with multiple attachments could bring that barrel to a usable state. So there's definitely use cases for weapon tuning. The question is, do you want to put the time in to toy around with it for optimal loadouts? Drop a comment and let me know if weapon tuning is something you will use or not. I honestly don't know how people will feel about it in its current state. So I'm curious to hear from each and every one of you. Please don't forget to click like on this video, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will catch y'all on the next one.